Just as the name applies, slow flight is when the pilot operates the aircraft at a slow airspeed. This video will focus on the two types of slow flight, clean and dirty. Flying the aircraft in slow flight with no flaps deployed is known as slow flight clean. Whereas flying the aircraft in slow flight with the flaps deployed fully in the landing configuration is known as slow flight dirty. Pilots must learn how to do slow flight in order to recognize the changes in aircraft flight characteristics and control effectiveness at critically slow airspeeds in various configurations. As a pilot slows the aircraft down into slow flight, the control effectiveness becomes less than at normal cruising speeds because less air is flowing over the aircraft's airfoils. Since less air is flowing over the aircraft's airfoils, the primary flight controls, aileron, elevator, and rudder require more input by the pilot to achieve the desired flight conditions. This reduction of airflow over the control surfaces is often described as a mushy feeling, requiring more control input before the aircraft responds. Slow flight also demonstrates how the pitch-power relationship changes as the aircraft is slowed down. At normal cruising speeds, changing the pitch of the aircraft will cause it to climb or descend, and changing the power setting will speed up or slow down the aircraft. But as an aircraft is slowed down, the pilot enters the back side of the power curve, also known as the region of reverse command. This means that when the pilot changes the pitch of the aircraft, they are controlling the aircraft's airspeed, and when they adjust the power, they are controlling the aircraft's altitude. To slow the aircraft, the pilot pitches up, and to speed up the aircraft, the pilot pitches down. To increase the altitude, the pilot increases the power setting, and to descend, they decrease the power setting. It is important to understand these characteristics of slow flight, because when landing an aircraft, the aircraft is slowed down, and the pilot uses the aircraft's pitch to maintain the desired airspeed, while increasing or decreasing the power setting to maintain the desired glide slope down the runway. They also understand that control inputs will increase to make small adjustments due to the reduction of airflow over the control surfaces. By mastering slow flight at altitude, a pilot will understand how to properly manipulate the aircraft's flight controls and understand the pitch-power relationship necessary to make stable approaches when making landings. In order for a pilot to enter and fly in the clean configuration of slow flight, they must Perform the ABC checklist and select an altitude that will allow recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL, per the FAA Airman Certification Standards. Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude to conduct slow flight that is above 2000 feet AGL. Entering the last 90 degrees of a clearing turn, reduce the power to 1500 RPMs and smoothly increase pitch to maintain altitude as airspeed decreases. As the aircraft's power is reduced, the nose of the aircraft will naturally lower. The pilot must gradually and increasingly act back elevator control input to maintain the starting altitude. This increase in the angle of attack will also slow the aircraft. It will also seem as if the aircraft should be in a climb, but since the thrust was reduced by reducing the throttle, the aircraft's altitude will remain constant even with a large angle of attack. The pilot must maintain their starting heading and altitude that the maneuver was started at as the airspeed decreases. The pilot should choose an aiming point ahead of the aircraft to keep the nose of the aircraft pointed to in order to remain on heading, as well as utilizing the heading and altitude bugs while scanning the flight instruments periodically to maintain a constant heading and altitude. As the airspeed approaches approximately 55 to 60 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot must smoothly adjust the power in order to maintain level flight, approximately 1900 to 2000 RPMs. As the power is added, the pilot must increase their right rudder input to counteract the turning tendencies caused by the aircraft's high angle of attack, slow airspeed, and increase in power. Continue slowing to 55 to 60 knots indicated airspeed and adjust the pitch attitude and power settings to maintain the same altitude at the desired airspeed. Avoid abrupt changes in pitch, bank, and power. Once the aircraft is stabilized at the airspeed and altitude that is desired, trim the aircraft to alleviate the excessive back elevator pressures. If the aircraft is properly trimmed, the airspeed should remain constant at the desired airspeed, and the nose of the aircraft will remain in the same place without the pilot's input on the controls. Once the aircraft is stabilized and trimmed, the pilot then will perform straight and level flight, 
turns, climbs, and descends using relatively shallow bank angles while maintaining 55 to 60 knots indicated airspeed. 10 to 15 degrees of bank should be used while turning unless otherwise specified. If at any point during the slow flight maneuver the stall warning horn activates, immediately lower the nose just enough to accelerate the aircraft until the warning horn is silenced. To recover from slow flight in the clean configuration, the pilot must Initiate the recovery to cruising speed by smoothly applying full power, adjusting the pitch to maintain the target altitude, and adjust rudder input to remain coordinated as the aircraft's airspeed increases. Throughout the recovery, re-trim as necessary to compensate for changes in control pressures. Resume a normal cruise speed around 95 to 105 knots indicated airspeed and reduce the power to roughly 2300 RPMs, unless otherwise specified. In order for a pilot to enter and fly in the dirty configuration of slow flight, they must perform the ABC checklist and select an altitude that will allow recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL, per the FAA Airman Certification Standards. Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude to conduct slow flight that is above 2000 feet AGL. Entering the last 90 degrees of a clearing turn, reduce the power to 1500 RPMs and smoothly increase pitch to maintain altitude as airspeed decreases. As the aircraft's power is reduced, the nose of the aircraft will naturally lower. The pilot must gradually and increasingly act back elevator control input to maintain the starting altitude. This increase in the angle of attack will also slow the aircraft. It will also seem as if the aircraft should be in a climb but since the thrust was reduced by reducing the throttle, the aircraft's altitude will remain constant even with a large angle of attack. The pilot must maintain their starting heading and altitude that the maneuver was started at as the airspeed decreases. The pilot should choose an aiming point ahead of the aircraft to keep the nose of the aircraft pointed to in order to remain on heading, as well as utilizing the heading and altitude bugs while scanning the flight instruments periodically to maintain a constant heading and altitude. As the airspeed decreases to the flap operating range, below 110 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot should lower the first 10 degrees of flaps. As the first set of flaps are lowered, the aircraft's airfoils will generate more lift. The pilot must apply slight forward elevator pressure to prevent the aircraft from climbing and to maintain the starting altitude. The pilot should trim the aircraft as necessary to maintain the desired altitude after adding the first 10 degrees of flaps. As the airspeed decreases below 85 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot should incrementally add the last two settings of flaps, 20 and 30 degrees, in 10 degree increments. The pilot must also adjust the elevator pressure and trim the aircraft to maintain the starting altitude. As the airspeed approaches approximately 50 to 55 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot must smoothly adjust the power in order to maintain level flight, approximately 2000 to 2100 RPMs. As the power is added, the pilot must increase their right rudder input to counteract the turning tendencies caused by the aircraft's high angle of attack, slow airspeed, and increase in power. Continue slowing to 50 to 55 knots indicated airspeed and adjust the pitch attitude and power settings to maintain the same altitude at the desired airspeed. Avoid abrupt changes in pitch, bank, and power. Once the aircraft is stabilized at the airspeed and altitude that is desired, Trim the aircraft to alleviate the excessive back elevator pressures. If the aircraft is properly trimmed, the airspeed should remain constant at the desired airspeed, and the nose of the aircraft will remain in the same place without the pilot's input on the controls. Once the aircraft is stabilized and trimmed, the pilot will then perform straight and level flight, turns, climbs, and descents using relatively shallow bank angles while maintaining 50 to 55 knots indicated airspeed. 10 to 15 degrees of bank should be used while turning unless otherwise specified. If at any point during the slow flight maneuver the stall warning horn activates, immediately lower the nose just enough to accelerate the aircraft until the warning horn is silenced. To recover from slow flight in the dirty configuration, the pilot must initiate the recovery to cruising speed by smoothly applying full power, adjusting the pitch to maintain the target altitude, adjust rudder input to remain coordinated, and retract to 20 degrees of flaps as the aircraft's airspeed increases. As airspeed increases, set flaps to 10 degrees and establish a pitch attitude to maintain altitude. Once the aircraft's airspeed is above 60 knots indicated airspeed, retract flaps to the full up position. 
Throughout the recovery, retrim as necessary to compensate for changes in control pressures. Resume a normal cruise speed around 95 to 105 knots indicated airspeed and reduce the power to roughly 2300 RPMs, unless otherwise specified. Some helpful tips when conducting slow flight are Thoroughly clear the area before entering slow flight, including the area below and behind the aircraft. Do not rush the setup, as this will cause the aircraft to be harder to control properly to maintain heading and altitude. As the nose of the aircraft is raised to slow down the aircraft, the forward visibility will be reduced. The pilot should choose a reference point 45 degrees to the left to use to maintain their desired heading. Make smooth, small corrections to the pitch and power to return to or maintain the desired heading and altitude. Remain ahead of the aircraft by noting trends on the flight instruments and making the necessary corrections. Only glance at the instruments, do not stare at them as this will cause the pilot to chase the instruments and only cause the maneuver to become choppy and uncontrolled. As power is increased, so should the pilot's right rudder input. As power is decreased, less right rudder will be necessary. When turning to the left while in slow flight, right rudder will still be necessary to remain coordinated due to the turning tendencies. When turning right, more right rudder will be needed to remain coordinated. Trim the aircraft once the desired airspeed and power settings have been established. When power changes are made, be sure to re-trim the aircraft. Remember that pitch and power are a relationship, meaning when one is adjusted, the other will also need to be adjusted. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner, the pilot must select an entry altitude that will allow the task to be completed no lower than 1500 feet. Establish and maintain an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in a stall warning. Accomplish coordinated straight and level flight, turns, climbs, and descents with an airplane configured as specified by the evaluator without a stall warning. Private pilot applicants must maintain the specified altitude, plus or minus 100 feet, specified heading, plus or minus 10 degrees, airspeed plus or minus 10 knots, and specified angle of bank plus or minus 10 degrees. Commercial pilot applicants must maintain the specified altitude plus or minus 50 feet, specified heading plus or minus 10 degrees, airspeed plus 10 knots, and specified angle of bank plus or minus 5 degrees. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.